the topic of today's video will be uh, Cauchy's theorem and we are uh, extending that uh, topic or complex integration right so this is a part of complex integration but this time the contour means the curve uh, will be closed right <clears throat> Uh, so starting with the uh, definition of domain, I will recall the defini definition of the domain, uh, uh, which is that uh, uh, a simply connected open set is called domain, uh, or you can say that uh, uh, an open set in which any two points can be uh, connected by a sequence of polygonal lines, uh, uh, that is called a domain, right? So I, I am recalling the do definition of domain right and an example of domain is this this is an open set without boundary right so you take any two points on it this point is one point this is another point and you can join these points by sequence of polygonal lines this way right and these lines lie inside the domain lie inside the set right so this is an example of a domain Okay, now I will uh, define simply connected domain, right? Domain, simply connected domain, A, right? And the other is multiply connected domain, right? You can see that uh, this is a domain in which any two points can be connected by a sequence of polygonal lines the first thing is that and all of those lines should lie inside the set right then we'll call it domain i should give a, an example of a non non domain and uh, which is like this You can see that <clears throat> this is an example of a non-domain uh, if you take any two points uh, one point here and one point here then you cannot join these points uh, with a sequence of lines and all of those lines lying within the set right but individually they are domains right if you see this this is a individually it is it will be a domain it is also a domain but uh, collectively uh, they will not form a domain right because taking one point here this part and another point this part right you cannot join these two points uh, by using these sequence of lines and all of those lines should lie inside the set right this is an example of not a domain right okay now I will uh, define simply connected domain right so simply connected domain uh, I will draw the figure and uh, Simply connected domain is this. Right. So this is an example of a simply connected domain, and why we are calling it simply connected. Uh, I will draw a small closed curve inside it, and this closed curve is this curve. You can see this curve. Right c right and this is domain simply connected domain simply connected domain right and why uh, we are calling it simply connected because if we take any curve closed curve inside this domain right and we shrink it right then that curve can be shrunk to a point without leaving the um, domain d you can see that this is a domain d and if you shrink this curve this is a closed curve right and if you shrink this curve this will shrink to a point right and uh, obviously uh, this curve will not leave the domain d right means while the in the process of shrinking the curve will not leave this domain d that's why we are calling it a simply connected domain and that is true for all of such simply closed curve inside this if, if i draw another curve here uh, 
like this you can draw another curve here this one right and if you shrink it again to a single point right then it will not leave this, this set right so this is an example of simply connected domain and a domain which is not simply connected is will be called multiply connected i will draw a diagram here of multiply connected domain multiply connected domain right and you can see that this domain obviously this is a domain right why this domain because you can, you can take any two points on it take this point and this point then you can join these points by a sequence of polygonal lines right and all of those lines li lie within this set right so this is a domain first thing is that second th thing is that why we are calling it multiply connected because if you take similar to this if i take two curves like this one if i take a curve here closed curve right c1 okay okay then it can be shrunk to a single point without without leaving this domain d that's fine if i take a curve here like this again this can be shrunk to a point without leaving this set right but if i take a curve here and closing this hole like this right you can see that this is my c3 right and if you try to shrink it shrink it then obviously it will leave this set it will leave, leave this set right in order to uh, shrink this curve to a single point uh, it will go like this it, it means uh, it will appear like due to the surface tension it will go to shrink and will shrink to a point but that point will leave the domain d right so intuitively you can say that uh, a domain is simply connected if it does not have any holes inside it right you can see that it is not having any hole right okay and if it is having hole like this one you can see that this is a hole right so in that case it will be not be a simply connected domain we will call it multiply connected domain uh, in this case it is a doubly connected domain because you can see that one hole for doubly connected if it has two holes then it will, will be triply connected right so doubly connected right this is a domain d okay so in our uh, statement of cauchy's theorem uh, we will assume that uh, the nature of domain d will be simply connected right initially okay so moving to the theorem of um, the statements theorem cauchy's theorem that is cauchy's theorem the statement of the theorem is uh, if f is analytic in a simply connected domain d right and f dash is continuous in d right then for any closed curve c inside d we have equal to zero right means first thing is that you need a domain d right and that should be a simply connected domain d like this one right okay and there's a curve c closed curve c lying within that domain d like this picture right this is a domain d right and this is simply connected domain d and you what do you need you need uh, c closed curve c like this one right and f is analytic f is analytic on this whole domain d right then 
for any closed curves phi inside this domain d the integral uh, along that curve will be equal to zero right okay and uh, we will prove this result right it assumes that f is analytic in a simply connected domain d means f if f is analytic then it will satisfy cauchy riemann equations right and uh, another thing is that f dash is continuous and if f dash is continuous then it's uh, u and v part because f is equal to u plus i v then u and v uh, will also be continuous or you can say that uh, partial derivatives are also continuous in domain d right and then we'll take a closed curve c inside d and then we'll prove this result right okay but to prove this result we need two things first is the cauchy riemann equations and the second is the green's theorem right from the real calculus right and uh, okay i will start with cauchy riemann equations first uh, let since f equal to u plus i v is analytic right therefore by cauchy riemann equations del u over del x equal to del v over del y and del u over del y is equal to negative of del v over del x and these are by cauchy riemann equations right okay now evaluating this integral integral c f z dz this will be actually equal to and the value of fz is u plus i v and dz is actually dx plus i dy right and you know that this symbol uh, represents that the contour c is closed right that's why we are putting a circle here right okay then on writing it as u dx and that will be minus v dy plus eta times eta will be here v dx and plus u dy right and okay fine then at this point you can see that uh, the integral along this closed curve c is actually the sum of two integrals right along curve c and uh, if you try to use the green's theorem at this point i will first uh, recall the green's theorem what is that green's theorem at this point recall green's theorem right and the theorem is that uh, if p as a function of xy and q as a function of xy mm -hmm. Are continuous with their partial derivatives inside region capital R bounded by a closed curve. Let me call that curve t right then integration of p x y dx plus q x y dy equal to line integration actually along t is equal to double integration along the region r del q over del y minus del p over del x dx and dy right so this is a statement of green's theorem uh, i have written it incomplete uh, the theorem is if p and q are functions of x and y and they both are continuous with their partial derivatives inside region r right and that region r is bounded by actually closed curve t right you can uh, think of a closed disk right uh, if you take a closed disk uh, then the surface of the disk means uh, the surface of the disk is this region r and the boundary is the region boundary is the curve capital t right and then the line integration of p dx plus q dy is equal to the double integration over that region 
del q over del y minus del p over del x dx dy right and this is the diagram for it and this theorem holds on x y plane right since we are using dx dy here the theorem will be true for x y plane on x y plane we have something like this a region r bounded by curve t right this is the region r and it is bounded by closed curve t right you can see that this is a closed curve t bounding something inside it right and that is called region r right and you can see the direction of this curve that is counterclockwise anticlockwise right then this line integral line integral of some function p dx plus q dy along this curve t is actually equal to uh, the surface integral or you can say that double integral over the region r right del q by del y minus del p by del x dx dy means the green's theorem relates the line integral to the surface integral right and uh, most important thing is that uh, that surface is bounded by that curve right means uh, you are going to integrate something over the boundary of some surface right then the theorem uh, switches the line integral in terms of surface integral right okay so this will be like a prerequisite for this Cauchy's theorem I will be using this result this result here right and you can see that in place of T right T is a closed curve we have capital C here right capital C so C is a closed curve this time right and place of capital R region R we have domain D right okay and I will going to use this theorem for this integral and for this integral right okay now equation number one from equation one right integral c fz dz equal to uh, this thing using green's theorem on this integral that will become del v over del del v over del sorry del q over del x okay fine del v over del of negative v actually that is minus v right over del x minus del u over del y dx dy and this will be replaced by d right and line integral right integration along a curve is converted integration into integration over domain d right means this single integral is converted into double integral using that Green's theorem, right? And for this one, plus eta times this will become del u over del x minus del v over del y dx dy, right? And here I will have double integration domain d, right? So this step is just the reflection of this Green's theorem. By using this Green's theorem, uh, each of these two integrals can be written in this form in the terms of double integration, right? And now I will use uh, Cauchy Riemann equation. And one more thing is that uh, I can only uh, use Green's theorem here uh, uh, whenever it is given that uh, u uh, and v are continuous and their derivative is continuous. Means f dash is continuous is assumed here right due to this condition i was able to use this green's theorem because see here uh, green's theorem statement uh, it says that the partial derivatives inside the region are continuous continuity of partial derivatives is required right and that's that is essentially the hypothesis of the cauchy's theorem that f dash should be continuous in g right that's why i'm able to use this um, green's theorem here in my equation number one right okay then it will become uh, a negative sign will appear here okay and uh, i will use cauchy uh, sorry cauchy riemann equations using cr equations here i will get integral c fz 
dz i think that will become minus of del v by del x is equal to minus of del u by del y and actually del u by del y is equal to negative of this thing so ultimately it will be zero right d zero dx dy and again del u by del x is equal to del v by del y by cauchy riemann equations so it will be zero dx dy so the ultimately the result will be zero so this is the proof of cauchy's theorem right so i will again repeat the statement of the cauchy's theorem with the diagram here see that f is analytic in a simply connected domain d i will draw a random domain d simply connected let me draw it with different color right so this is a simply connected domain d you can see that there are no holes inside it right and the boundary is it is it is boundaryless that's why we are calling it open set right <coughs> simply connected domain domain d right and inside this domain d we have this any closed curve c let me draw a closed curve c like this one this is a closed curve c it can be of arbitrary shape right so this is my closed curve c right and the theorem says that f is analytic inside this red colored region means simply connected domain f is analytic everywhere on this red colored region right red colored domain right and this is a closed curve inside d right c should lie within the d right uh, okay then uh, the line integration of fz along this c if you integrate your f function f over the boundary of this c right then the answer will be zero right so this is the picture you should be uh, keeping in your mind when you apply this cauchy's theorem right and obviously this domain right uh, lies on jet plane right i will write jet plane here right you have jet plane complex plane right and on complex plane you have a simply connected domain d right okay and inside that simply connected domain d you have something a closed curve c right and you want to integrate your f o along this curve c and you know that f is analytic over this red region right then the integration along any such curve closed curve which lies completely inside d it will always be zero right no matter what is the shape of that curve c whether it is a triangle rectangle uh, ellipse any shape but it should be closed right so this is cauchy's theorem and uh, after several years um, uh, a french mathematician gorset um, redefined this theorem or did some manipulation on this theorem uh, he told that this condition is not required f dash is continuous on d is not required actually uh, then this theorem is still hold right i will rewrite that statement cauchy gorset theorem because the french mathematician named gorset uh, redefined this theorem and he actually removed this condition of continuity of f dash inside the d means this condition f dash is continuous in d is actually not needed right even then this theorem hold right i will rewrite that statement cauchy gorset theorem cauchy gorset theorem and it says that if f is analytic in a simply connected domain d right then for any closed curve inside d its line integration is zero right you can see that this condition has been removed in the theorem in the statement of cauchy gorset theorem right and its proof is uh, quite complicated and very long it needs two or three lemmas to prove this uh, result right because the uh, it is this theorem is simple means as compared 
so this it it needs less hypothesis but the proof is complicated right but we'll go with this cauchy's theorem because the result is still the same so we'll carry on this uh, statement right okay i will take examples of uh, this cauchy's theorem example number 1 evaluate the integration over closed curve c because the symbol is used it indicates that this curve c should be closed curve right e to the power z dz where c is any arbitrary curve inside complex plane c i would like it as like this c this is for complex number c and this is closed curve c right so however the shape of the curve, uh, c is not known but it is only known that the curve is closed due to the symbol right solution and let me draw the y and x axis right and this closed curve c i will draw it with black marker arbitrary curve it can be drawn anywhere right closed curve c fine and where is my domain d because the theorem needs domain d where is the domain d domain d is actually the whole complex plane right means everything you see here is a domain d right and the function you can see the function this function e to the power z uh, you focus on this function right e to the power z as i should draw the domain d here also with my red marker so this is a domain d the whole complex plane right here also negative side this side the whole complex plane is a domain d right it is extending infinitely in all directions right this is a domain d okay so as you can see that this function e to the power z fz equal to e to the power z is analytic inside right obviously f is e to the power z is an analytic function you can check it by using cr equations right uh, it will satisfy cr equations everywhere and it uh, has continuous partial derivatives everywhere right so this is an analytic function or you say it entire function because it is analytic over the whole complex plane so this function is an entire function right so it is analytic everywhere over the red region right means the all of the complex plane and obviously it will be analytic inside c or within c right then or should i write it within c within c then by cauchy's theorem integration c e to the power z dz equal to 0 all right So I have used that theorem. No need to integrate it because you know that the result will be zero, right? By Cauchy's theorem. Fine. And obviously, uh, this result means the integration will always be zero as long as this function is an entire function. Means if we take sine z here, sine z dz zero, cos z dz zero, right? Any polynomial multiplied by d, then dz equal to zero. Constant function dz zero, right? Because all entire functions when integrated along a closed curve give the answer zero right the example number 2 and this time i will take evaluate mm, integration close along closed curve c and 1 over z square d z right where c is an ellipse right and the ellipse has equation x minus 1 whole square 
by 1 by or should I write it 4 plus y minus 1 whole square or should I write it 2 equal to 1 fine so this is the ellipse centered at 1 comma 2 right and with axis 2 and 1 right major axis and minor axis solution first we'll draw this ellipse x axis and y axis right and i will draw this ellipse and the ellipse will be uh, x minus 1 whole square upon uh, 1 by 2 square you can take this 4 here in the denominator 1 by 4 right and then you can write it as 1 by 2 square and it will be y minus 2 whole square over 1 square and then the center of the ellipse will be 1 and 2 means 1 here and 2 here okay fine and uh, x along x it will be 2 it will be here okay 2 and it will be 1 it will be like this point is one fine you can see that the center is one comma two this point is one comma two this is one this is so the center of the ellipse is 1 comma 2 and x minus 1 whole square over 2 1 by 2 square sorry I think it is it should be small so it's 1 by 2 square it will be like this fine one by two square plus y minus two whole square over one square equal to one right okay so one comma two is the center of the ellipse right and you can see that the length of the major axis semi major axis is half right and minor axis it is one right okay and the important thing is that this function fz you know this function fz is it analytic within this contour c right this is your contour c okay and you can see that this function here fz equal to 1 over z square is analytic within c right however we know that z is equal to 0 is a singular similarity of this thing right z is equal to 0 is a singular point of this function and fortunately that z is equal to 0 is not lying within this c it is outside z equal to 0 is here right so our ellipse means our contour c is not enclosing any singularity of this function so we can say that this fz is analytic within this contour c right and then we can freely use that theorem because one of the hypotheses of this theorem is that f should be analytic in a simply connected domain d right f is not however f is not analytic at z equal to 0 but luckily z equal to 0 is outside this c right okay is analytic within c so by Cauchy's theorem or Cauchy Gorset theorem you can write it as integration c 1 over z square dz will be equal to 0 right okay so we have taken two examples the first example is that when the function has no singularity anywhere right and the answer is 0 by using this Cauchy's theorem right in the second example we have taken 1 by z square which has a singularity one singularity at z equal to 0 but luckily that singularity was outside our closed curve c and again we use this theorem right Cauchy's theorem and the result is again 0 right and if you uh, want to draw the domain D here means the red region then I will draw it like this 
my region will be like this and since you know that function is analytic not analytic at z equal to 0 means the boundary of the region should not include this z equal to 0 right you cannot draw this region like this in that case z equal to 0 will be enclosed in your domain d so your domain d must not include this z equal to 0 this is a danger point right so you can extend this region here you can extend this red region here but not here right so this is the domain d fine so we will we were able to use this Cauchy's theorem due to this singularity lying outside the domain d or you can say that the nature of the curve was such that it was not enclosing any singularity of this function at z right but what happens <coughs> if this curve encloses the singularity right had we given the an ellipse of the form x square plus y square equal to 1 means an ellipse centered at origin right and having both axes equal to 1 then what will happen in that case uh, your ellipse will would be here right and that would enclose the singularity then uh, can we use this theorem Cauchy's theorem no right uh, this theorem should be modified for those cases when the curve c encloses this singularity right so i will rub this first Cauchy's theorem for multiply connected domain right Cauchy's theorem for multiply connected domain right so in order to use this theorem for cases when the singularity of the function lies within c right okay then we'll start with first a multiply connected domain i will draw one or two holes inside it right and we'll derive the result and then we'll uh, generalize the result for n holes right okay so this is a multiply connected domain you can see that this domain right and it has holes inside it because we are saying that it is multiply connected this is the first hole right second hole right So this is an example of multiply connected domain multiply connected domain or more precisely it is triply connected domain because it has two holes inside it right okay and you can see that if some function is given I will write it here let f is analytic inside a multiply connected domain like this right and c1 comma c2 comma dash 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 ck are closed simple curves inside C right then line integration of FZ DZ along the closed curve C is actually equal to the summation of integrals F Z dz and k starts from 1 to n right fine 
Now should I write it as n? Okay. And let me draw this c c1 c2 c1. C1 is the curve enclosing the first hole, right? Okay. And c2 is the curve enclosing second hole this is a c1 this is a c2 and similarly you can draw c3 c4 up to cn i have drawn only two holes and c is the curve here like this this is a c c and the red region is the domain d right domain d multiply connected domain d so you can see in picture that first thing is that you need a domain D that should be multiply connected having one or more, hole, more holes inside it. I made only two holes, fine. And C is the curve. You can see this curve, closed simple curve, right? The bigger curve and closing the two small curves C1 and C2. And C1 is a curve and closing that hole. C2 is another curve, simple closed curve and closing second hole and so on. And C is the curve and closing all of those c1 c2 and cn right okay then the theorem says that right means modified version of this Cauchy's theorem for multiply connected domain this time we are focused on multiply connected domain right in that case the line integration of f along this outer curve c is actually equal to the sum of integrals over these small curves c1 c2 and so on right you can see the summation is present here right and why this is true means why this is a direct consequence of this Cauchy's theorem when applied on such a multiply connected do domain. We'll see a small proof for it, right? Proof. Right. Mm. Make cross cuts in multiply connected domain D such that it becomes simply connected right as shown in figure as shown in the figure new figure i'm going to draw the new figure what do you want i want to use that Cauchy's theorem and we know that this Cauchy's theorem was for simply connected domain but this time we are facing a multiply connected domain then what do we want i want to convert this multiply connected domain into a simply connected domain right and that can be uh, done by making cross cuts right right cross cut means i will show here in diagram how to make a cross cut in order to convert a multiply connected domain into a simply connected domain and then uh, we'll be able to use that Cauchy's theorem right we want to use that Cauchy's theorem okay so this domain you see this domain I will copy this domain again right okay you can see that the first hole right and second hole right okay and we had this curve outer curve C right C right and we had two curves C1 and C2 in the original picture so this is my C1 C1 and this is C2 right and the outer was domain D right and in order to show that this is a domain I will put red dots everywhere right okay
now the two pictures are almost identical right and uh, you can see that since we are going to make cross cuts here right and those cross cuts are made by joining these outer curves c with these inner curves c1 and c2 like this one see uh, if i make a cross cut here uh, here like this right both directions right this point is a point and this is b point right and here a cross cut here and you can see that if you move anti-clockwise like this way right then you can enter along this cross cut from this point in this way and then you will go like this right this point is b point okay and then on moving along the boundary of c1 then you will go back along this arrow because this arrow has both directions in the inside direction outward direction then you will go along this like this one this one and then here then you will enter from here by this cross cut this point is c point this is d point then you enter along this line then you move along the boundary of the c2 then you will come back along this dc path then finally here right so you can see that by introducing these two cross cuts cd and ab right this multiply connected regions becomes simply connected why because this time originally you can see this c1 curve right you can change this c1 to a single point but that will leave the domain d because this is a white gap here right but in this picture you cannot put a curve like this close curve like this means you cannot put a closed curve uh, enclosing this hole or this hole because you have made a cut here right you cannot put a closed curve like this you have to put that closed curve either on the left of this cut or on the right of that cut and in that case uh, shrinking that closed curve right will not leave the domain d means that this picture is now become simply connected right okay okay and you can see that the, there are two cross cuts a b and c d fine and since it is a simply connected simply connected domain then i can use the cauchy's theorem here because cauchy's theorem can only be applied on the simply connected domain till now right okay so using cauchy's uh, theorem on the simply connected domain here integration c fz dz plus integration along ab means this path ab path fz dz then we'll come back from this path that will be ba fz dz then along closed path c1 c1 fz dz then plus C D F Z D Z plus D C F Z D Z C two F Z D Z that should be equal to zero by Cauchy's theorem because this time this whole curve this whole curve is simply connected right and uh, you can see that along this C this integral represents the integration along this c and along a b this one then b a this integral then c1 this integral and one more thing you can see that along c1 the direction is anti-clockwise right so making an anti-clockwise direction like this small arrow right and if you move along c1 you can see that the direction is clockwise i will make a clockwise arrow here like this right and similarly along this the c2 curve the direction is again clockwise right so see these arrows right this is an up arrow counterclockwise and these are c1 along c1 and c2 the arrows are clockwise right so you, as you know that this ab see this ab this is a small part of line right so in line or curve you can say at curve right integration along ab 
is equal to the negative of integration of along ba means the limits will be changed lower limit a upper limit b and in the reverse case the lower limit b will be b and upper limit will be a so these two integrals will cancel each other right and similarly these two integrals cd and dc will cancel each other right and we'll be left with these three integrals first second and third right okay integration c fz dz and you remember this the direction of the arrow it is actually anti clockwise right you can see from picture and this one and this direction is clockwise verify from figure c1 fz dz and then plus this direction again c2 it is again clockwise fz dz equal to zero because these terms cancel each other right fine and then you can bring these two integrals on the left and right hand side fz dz equal to taking these two integrals on the right hand side and that will produce a negative sign before these two integrals but absorbing that negative sign by reversing the direction of these arrows we can do also do that means these actually are a clockwise circles right and i will replace them by anti clockwise circles in order to absorb my negative sign on the right hand side so i will this time i will draw anti clockwise circle fz dz along c1 and along c2 fz dz right so this is a small proof when we considered only two holes right and you can see that the arrows have same directions right anti clockwise anti clockwise anti clockwise so we can generalize this result for n holes and that result will be this one right in general for n holes inside multiply connected domain the result will be integration c fz dz equal to the sum of such all such integrals and writing that denoting that sum by summation k equal to 1 to n integration fz dz c k right and generally we don't put an arrow here right whether you put an anti clockwise arrow or clockwise direction um, both sides are same right okay right fine so now i will i will take example of uh, such a multiply connected domain right before taking its uh, example i will uh, add one more thing that this theorem uh, what does it do it actually replaces the contour uh, that was present inside the domain d by some simpler contours c1 c2 c3 and so on means the integration on the outer contour is actually equal to the integration on the uh, inner small contours right so this will be the main highlight of this um, theorem for multiply connected region and i will be going to use uh, this result in uh, deriving a small but useful fact right a uh, useful result right and this result will be used in the later part of our numericals right and the result is integration closed integration along uh, closed curve c dz over z minus a to the power uh, let me write it n equal to 2 pi eta if n is equal to 1 and 0 if n is not equal to 1 and this where n is an integer right and a is a complex number inside lying inside contour c it seems closed curve right 
So this is the useful result uh, which says that integral of dz over z minus eight to the power n is equal to two pi i type and is equal to one and for not equal to one the result is always zero, right? And we will be using this result to prove this, right? Okay. Solution, solution or we should say proof. If n equal to one, right? Then capital I equal to integral C dz over z minus A, right? And C is a contour, right? Arbitrary uh, of arbitrary shape uh, containing this number A, right? You can see that your function is one upon z minus A. Here, fz equal to one upon z minus A is not analytic at z equal to a right hence making a small circle c1 around a that is mod z minus a equal to small r right or you can take it mod z minus a equal to one. <coughs> Shown in figure like this. You have this y axis and x axis, right? And this z is equal to a is somewhere. Let this point be z equal to a, right? And this is your contour C. This is your contour C. It's a complicated contour or direction, or I should say the orientation is. Uh, anti-clockwise and its shape is arbitrary you can see that the shape of this contour c is arbitrary shape right so this contour c is enclosing the singularity a right and you again see that this function is analytic not analytic at z equal to a and every uh, except z equal to a it is analytic right so i can draw my region like this with red dots this is my region because this function is analytic everywhere but not at this point right so you have to leave this point a point right make a hole here automatically a hole will be created at this point because the function is not analytic at z equal to a and within this region it is analytic right so this is a domain d and it is extending towards infinity right the red region okay now uh, what I will do uh, since it is a multiply connected region because you can see that there is a hole at z equal to a right so I have to remove this hole or again I uh, should say that uh, I have to make this f continuous on my uh, domain d and for that I have to put a curve here put a small circle here like this one right and this circle is actually c1 right c1 and this circle is centered at z equal to a you can see that right and having radius r small r is the radius right or you can take r equal to 1 1 by 2 anything right so in this way uh, this <coughs> region looks multiply connected right and now i will be going to use this result right the original integral along the curve c given curve c is actually equal to the sum of integrals along the smaller curve c1 c2 and so on right in this case i have only smaller curve c1 c is the bigger curve right the curve on the left hand side integral and here we have c1 the smaller curve right so actually the integration along this outer curve will be automatically equal to the integration along this small circle of radius r and centered at small a right or you can take r equal to 1 1 by 2 it is your choice because no matter what is r uh, but the important thing is that this curve c1 should lie inside this c because that is the hypothesis of this theorem right okay so using parameterization and the choice of uh, this circle why we uh, choose a circle why don't we choose a square or rectangle right around that uh, z equal to a the reason is that because z equal to a mod z minus a equal to r is the equation of circle obviously and uh, it is the easiest equation uh, which we can parameterize and then apply integration because the parameterization for a circle is very easy z minus a equal to r times e to the power eta theta and theta varies from 0 to 2 pi you can see from here the complete circle right 
okay now i will evaluate this integral using parameterization right so using first using this uh, theorem right means the actual integral then the actual integral which i was asked uh, around the curve c right now it will be equal to the smaller curve means the complicated curve c right is replaced by a simpler curve c1 and that is actually a circle so this is the point where we use this theorem right dz over z minus a right fine now after using this theorem i will integrate this uh, by using the new uh, normal techniques of integration uh, which we discussed in our last video and that is the parameterization right where i should mention here where c1 is mod z minus a equal to small r right and to parameterize this circle now z minus a equal to r times e to the power eta theta and where theta changes from 0 to 2 pi because it is a complete circle now on differentiating it i will get dz equal to r eta e to the power eta theta d theta right and plugging these values here i will be getting therefore i equal to 0 to 2 pi and on plugging these values i will be getting uh, eta d theta and on integration it will give me 2 pi eta right so this is the proof for this one for n equal to 1 we have this answer 2 pi eta right you can see and i will call it part number a right fine so the important thing about this this is that uh, no matter what is the shape of this curve c right you will always replace that curve by a smaller circle right circle is the easiest equation to parameterize right and the answer is uh, can be directly written as 2 pi times eta provided this a lies within c right okay now i will take the another case when n is not equal to 1 and we'll break that case into uh, two sub cases further for positive n and negative n right i will call it case number b right if n is less than 1 and since n is an integer so n can be 0 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and so on right in that case then your function this function you can see this function fz is 1 over z minus it for n and if this is 0 then it will become a constant function right if it is n equal to minus 1 then it will become fz equal to z minus a if it is n equal to minus 2 then it will become z minus a whole square uh, you can say that every time for n less than 1 uh, fz will be a polynomial right because for negative values of n that is a polynomial of the form z minus a to the power n positive power right and for n equal to 0 uh, this is the constant and constant is a polynomial also right then fz is a polynomial of the form of of the form z minus a to the power n right and you know that a polynomial is an entire function right analytic function everywhere and using Cauchy, uh, Cauchy's theorem right means uh, when fz is an analytic function inside contour c then the result is always zero right using cauchy's theorem integral of fz dz phi and here we have c equal to zero because fz being a polynomial is an analytic function inside closed contour c and the result is 0 by Cauchy's theorem right okay now the third case if n is uh, just of 1 and greater than 1 right means n can be 2 3 4 and so on then i will be equal to integral c dz over z minus a to the power square if i take n equal to 2 or n equal to 3 right means 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, anything, right? Or uh, you can use this point also. This point. Okay, fine. I will do it again. Let me take n equal to 2, right? Let n equal to 2. Then I will be getting this. Using parameterization, it will give me i equal to, I am not, not writing that again, this parameterization. You can use it again and again, right? 
then it will give me i equal to integral 0 to 2 pi and i think i uh, i will be having ita times uh, e to the power ita theta and that will be cancelled e to the power ita theta and in the denominator i will be having e to the power ita 2 theta d theta right and you can see that ita will come, come outside 0 to 2 pi e to the power minus ita theta d theta right and since again uh, this is a periodic function of period 0 to 2 pi as we discussed in our last video the answer will be zero because it's a periodic function with period of 2 pi the answer will be zero no need to evaluate this right right so for any case when n is not equal to 1 case b and c you can see that the result is zero right so we will use this result a useful result in our uh, numericals right i will make a box on it we'll be using this result directly right and i am again uh, repeating the result that uh, for n equal to 1 right the answer is 2 pi eta and for any other number integer other than 1 the answer is 0 provided this a should lie within c right okay now we'll take examples of this example number 1 hmm. evaluate i equal to integral along close curve c um, z over z minus 1 whole square dz where c is mod of z minus 1 equal to 1 solution uh, the first thing is to draw this curve c right the circle is centered at 1 and the radius is, all, is equal to 1 right so this is the curve c z equal to 1 now we see this point will be z equal to 2 right fine x axis and this is y axis right and you will see that see this function fz equal to z over z minus 1 whole square you can see that this function is not analytic at z equal to 1 because denominator is becoming 0 at z equal to 1 means that z equal to 1 the function is not analytic right and that is this point z equal to 1 means the function is not analytic at this point right it uh, uh, indicates that uh, we have to draw a small circle here right because that will give rise to a multiply connected region you cannot say that the function is analytic inside this curve c right so you have to do something to avoid this singularity you have to make a small circle here fine or uh, yeah first me uh, factorize it in terms of partial fraction fractions if uh, i want to use this result right you can see that you want to use this result right but the problem is that this thing z thing right we should have one in the numerator in order to use that right okay here fz equal to z over z minus 1 whole square and using partial fraction um, we can write it as 1 over z minus 1 whole square i should have 1 yeah 1 1 1 and 1 right using partial fractions right assuming this equal to a upon z minus 1 plus b upon z minus 1 whole square and then on taking lcm and comparing you will get a equal to 1 and b equal to 1 right okay or you can write it directly by using hidden trial method as i have written it using partial fractions fine okay now capital i equal to integral so fz will be replaced by this thing c dz over z minus 1 plus integral c dz over z minus 1 whole square right and uh, now um, you can see that this is the curve c right and it is enclosing only one singularity right it means that uh, c and c1 are same right actually the idea of choosing c1 c2 c3 and so c4 and so on in multiply connected region is that every ck means every c1 c2 or c3 c4 
must enclose one and only one singularity right fine and you can see that this curve is enclosing just one singularity so it can be treated as c1 right had there been two singularities here means z equal to one and z equal to half and z equal to one then uh, i have to draw two curves c1 and c2 enclosing z equal to one by two and enclosing z equal to one means every ck must en enclose only one and only one singularity right so this is fine because this is enclosing one singularity so this will work as c1 right okay so i will not draw again c1 c2 and so on this is fine okay now i will use that formula uh, you can match this here we have n equal to 1 the power is 1 so the answer will be 2 pi eta 2 pi eta right but before writing 2 pi eta you first ensure that this a a is equal to 1 is lying inside this this one is lying inside this curve c this this point is lying inside this curve c you can see that one is lying inside c right then you can use that formula okay again see here this a is again lying inside c c from picture right okay so this is 2 pi eta and this will be 0 because this is not n equal to 1 so the answer is 2 pi eta and we have used that result i will call this result a let me call it result number a right using a so this is the answer 2 pi eta right taking another example example number two right evaluate i equal to integral along closed curve c mm, i take dz over z square minus one where c is um, mod z minus one equal to half half of one Fine, that is fine. Okay, one minus one. Okay. So this is my circle, right? Solution. First, I will draw the curve C, right? So this is the y-axis, this is x-axis, and here you can see that the circle is centered at z equal to one, and the radius is also equal to one. The so circle will be similar to that one. Fine. This is a circle C, right? Okay. Now you can see that the singularity of this function, yeah, to find the singularity, you can put the denominator equal to zero, and that will give you z equal to plus minus one. It is very simple. So z equal to one is the singularity. One singularity is here, z equal to one, right? And uh, minus one is another singularity. Z equal to minus one right and you can see that this time we are having two singularities while in our last question we had only one singularity right so in that case in this case i have to draw two circles right uh, the first circle should be c1 enclosing this singularity and the second uh, circle should be c2 enclosing the other singularity z equal to minus one but no we cannot draw c2 because if you again remember the uh, hypothesis of the theorem is that all c1 c2 c3 c4 and so on must lie inside c right so there is no point to make a circle here because this point lies outside our curve c right so the only point of interest will be this one z equal to one right okay so for that i have to write it in terms of partial fraction right okay mm. here fz equal to one of over z square minus one and that is actually equal to z minus one plus one over z plus one and on taking lcm that will produce i think minus i have to put minus here minus that will be two in the numerator right and i need one here so i will be balancing it by one by two right so you can use partial fractions here at this step or you should write it directly right to save time and that is just the hit and trial write the first factor plus or minus two possibilities if you take plus then that will produce 2z in the numerator but i don't need 2z i need one so i put minus sign but on taking lcm i was getting two in the numerator so i balanced it by the factor one by two here right okay so this is partial fraction technique okay and uh, now therefore i equal to integral c and this is my dz 
over z square minus 1 is equal to c dz over z minus 1 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 dz over z plus 1 right okay now if you see this integral right you see this function this function is 1 over z plus 1 and this function is analytic inside this c right you just compare this function with this letter c function is 1 over z plus 1 is analytic inside c you can check it from here right actually the singularity point is z equal to minus 1 and that is lying outside the curve c right means that this function is analytic inside this curve c so we'll be using cauchy's theorem and due to that the answer will be zero this will give you zero this integral will go to zero right and you should know the reason why cauchy's theorem right okay this theorem cauchy's theorem integral fz dz zero whenever fz is analytic this is analytic inside this c okay fine but what, what about this equal to 1 by 2 integral dz over z minus 1 c right can we use that formula formula number a result number a yes or no yes obviously see this the similarity is z equal to 1 or you can say that the function is 1 upon z minus 1 right inside the contour c you can see it from here and you again see that the c is enclosing one and only one singularity that is z equal to 1 so we can apply that result number a here and since it is its power is 1 right so the answer will be 2 pi eta using that result number a 1 by 2 2 pi eta using result number a ultimately the answer will be pi eta right okay example number three and for that i will uh, rub this first example number three evaluate integral c uh, dz over uh, z square plus one where c is mod z equal to 3 that's fine okay solution first i will draw the curve and the circle is uh, centered at origin and radius equal to 3 right y axis x axis so this is a circle of radius equal to 3 and centered at origin right c fine and now you check your function fz whether it is analytic inside it or not see the similarities of this function if you put this denominator equal to 0 you will get z equal to plus minus eta right and you have to plot eta and minus eta here this will be z equal to eta obviously and this is z equal to 3 this is 3 so eta will be something here z equal to eta and z equal to minus eta will be here and this time if you compare these two questions uh, both of these singularities are lying within c while in that question the one of the singularity was lying outside so the case was simpler than this one right okay now i have to draw circles new circles right because uh, if you want to treat it this c as c1 or c2 that is not possible in this case as it was possible in that case right because that was enclosing only one singularity this time a circle is the outer the contour is original contour is enclosing two singularities right so we have to draw two separate circles c1 and c2 right and let those circles be this one c1 and c2 c1 and this is the c1 and this is the c2 right and you just take care of one thing that these two circles should not intersect right okay this is c2 and what is the radius of this circle that is arbitrary means it should be less than one or equal to one right less than one fine and this is less than two i will take the radius r1 and r2 right and obviously r1 should be less than one r2 should be less than one in order to uh, avoid overlapping right okay so first i will write this fz fz equal to one over z square plus one and since it is one over z plus eta into z minus eta and then applying partial fractions i will write it as one over z minus eta and here i should have minus one over 
z plus eta and on taking lcm i am getting two eta in the numerator so one upon two eta should be the balancing factor right so this is by partial fraction okay now therefore i is equal to integral c and dz over z square plus one fine will be equal to integration c uh, one over two eta dz over z minus eta and minus one over two eta dz over z plus eta right and this step is obviously for that to in order to use that relation number a or result number a because we don't need anything in the numerator and the denominator should be precisely of the form z minus a right okay and uh, at this point right i will draw two new contours c1 and c2 however I, will, I have already drawn them so i will write it here making uh, circles c1 and c2 around z equal to eta and z equal to minus eta as you can see from figure such so that the first circle is mod z minus eta the center is eta first circle and radius is suppose it is small r1 right and second circle is mod z plus eta it will become plus eta and this radius is less than r2 right or should i write it equal to sorry and these are circles not disks where r1 is less than 1 and r2 is also less than 1 in order to avoid overlapping right so the problem will be converted again you remember that <coughs> Cauchy's uh, theorem for multiply connected do domain the problem of integrating the function around the outer contour is actually equal to the problem of evaluating uh, the function fz over these small contours c1 and c2 and then we add them to get the final result right so now i am going to apply the theorem on this i therefore i equal to integral 1 over 2i and this integral can be written as c1 dz over z minus eta plus c2 dz over z minus eta means these two integrals for this integral minus 1 over 2 eta this integral can be written as <coughs> c1 dz over z plus eta plus dz z plus eta c2 right okay equal to 1 over 2 eta right and you just see this point this point is z equal to eta whether this z equal to eta is enclosed inside c1 or not you see this figure yes z, z equal to eta is enclosed inside c1 right and now we can use that uh, result number a right and according to that result since this power is 1 the answer will be 2 pi eta right and plus uh, if you see this see this point z equal to eta and see the curve c2 z equal to I, eta lies within c2 or not you check it from figure uh, z equal to eta does not lie within c2 so you can say that this function is analytic within c2 right and now you can use the Cauchy's theorem and the answer will be zero i will write here y zero is due to the Cauchy's theorem right the function is analytic over this c2 you just check this function over the contour written here right okay minus 1 over 2 eta and now you check the function 1 over z plus eta and this is not analytic at z equal to minus eta but fortunately z equal to minus eta is not lying within c1 you can check it from here right so we can say that 1 over z plus eta is analytic within c1 right so the answer will be 0 and this is due to the Cauchy's theorem right and now the point is z equal to minus eta right similar to this one z equal to minus eta whether it lies within c2 or not check it yes it lies within c2 right so c2 is enclosing the singularity z equal to minus eta right and this is the only singularity that c2 is enclosing so we can again use the theorem number uh, useful result a and the answer will be 2 pi eta since the power is 1 here in place of n we have 1 okay so ultimately the answer will be uh, 0 right so you uh, used the Cauchy's theorem for uh, multi-connected domains also right but uh, uh, 
to use that Cauchy's theorem for multi-connected domain, you need uh, a result number A. That is very important result, right? We use this, that result directly. And uh, the important uh, part of the theorem is that uh, for both simply connected as well as multiply connected region is that you can always replace uh, an arbitrary contour or you can say a, a complex contour right or a, a contour of any shape can be replaced by a simple circles means whether it is the outer c is a square or is a triangle hexagon pentagon any figure it can always be replaced by simple circles right and those circles must enclose one singularity means of C1 circle must include first singularity, C2 only one singularity and that is the necessary condition uh, to use this result, number A, right? Uh, this is it for this uh, video. Uh, in the next video, we will be doing uh, something more on complex integration, right? Thanks.